Here is the Renogy 30 amp DC to DC onboard battery charger with MPPT. Just gonna unbox it real quick. Inside, temperature sensor, four ring terminal connectors, stickers, warranty card, other thing. Here's a long Ethernet looking cord. Interesting. There's another sensor sort of looking cord. Maybe this one's for maybe the automatic start. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I believe these two side covers come off. With these little screws here. Big vent sort of heat sink panel in the back. Nine and a half inches by five and a half inches and three inches tall. Three inches deep. Came with instruction packet too, which I just have somewhere else. Okay, the first thing you connect is the accessory battery to the charger. What people would call the house battery or how the instructions call it, the service battery. You connect the service battery, the house battery first. Then it says to connect the black wire first, the negatives, and then you connect the positive. For this one, it's the positive out, then connect it to the positive. And here we have a fuse, 40 amp fuse. The reason these are double stranded, I'm just reusing them from an earlier application. You don't need to have as big wires as this. These are double six gauge wires. That's why I only have a single six gauge wire down here before the fuse, because you only need it to be a six gauge wire. If you can see those lights, the next step is to select the battery type. And I'm gonna do that by clicking a button, which is right here. And over here it has the colors blue, lithium, Iron phosphate, LFP, red, and I think this yellow light means that it is at medium to low charge, something like that. Just moving ahead. The next thing it says to connect connections to the battery or the alternator. For me, my car doesn't have an alternator, so I'm connecting it straight to the battery. Back with the next step of the process. This red and black wire come from the battery in the back and the negative connects to the common negative terminal on the charger and the positive connects to the alternator slash battery. It says ignition battery. But as you can see, these two wires, they run the back. The positive is connected right here. The negative is connected to this ground right here. It's kind of tangled up with the inverter wires, but Gonna organize that a little better soon. The fuse in here is a 50 amp fuse put close to the battery. Okay, now I have the signal wire. So you plug this in there and it is running up to my fuse box. There's one right under the right under the dash. I just had got a fuse tap. The wire is plugged into there. Everything is connected. I also added the solar panel wires down here, the PV positive, and the other one on the negative, the common negative terminal. And as you can see, those two come down from here from my solar panel on top. Now it is the moment of truth. I'm gonna turn the car on and then back the car out to see if the solar turns on. And then we'll know if we did our job right. Okay, the car's on. Here's what we got. Two new lights, one red light on the alternator, which means according to the manual that it is charging the battery. And then we have the red light on on the solar panel light, which also means it is charging the battery. So that's cool. And in case you're wondering, I'll try and flip this upside down. Right now we are charging at 15.5 amps going into the battery. 17, yeah, about 17 amps going into the battery. It splits it up between 15 from the starter battery and 15 potentially from the solar. So we're probably getting 15 from the battery and one or two amps from the solar panel because it's a cloudy day and it's the winter. I'm just going to show you how I set up this DC to DC MPPT charge controller in this Prius. Right here is the battery area. I built this little stand to hold the battery. Then I have it strapped to the bed frame so that it's not going anywhere. And then I have 
the negative and positive terminals connected going around to the charge controller on the other side, which I'll show you in a second. And all this is under my bed, out of the way. I'll probably make a cloth uh, or some sort of waterproof cover for the top terminals just in case anything spills. I think that's good practice. Um, and this strap is too long, but I'm gonna trim that, so yeah. Over here, as you can see, is the charge controller. The car is off right now, but the battery is at, the yellow light means that it's at medium charge, uh, and this blue means that it's set to the lithium battery setting. These two are off right now because these two are connected to these switches. This one here on the left is the switch for my car battery, which is how it gets charged DC to DC. The car is off right now, so it wouldn't be charging anyways, but I have it off right now. Then this is the switch for my solar wire that goes up to the solar panel on top. Um, this is off right now, but I'm about to turn that on. Since it's daytime, I'm gonna cover the panel with my jacket. It's probably not a big deal for this small of a panel. It's 100 watt. Okay, that's pretty much covered. I'm gonna switch this. Let's see what happens. Oh, forgot. Gotta take the jacket off now. Hmm. All right, well, I'm not getting anything there. I feel like that should be working. The sun is pretty low, so it's not gonna get much, but I imagine it would still be getting something. So let me check. Well, just to show you, here are my two switches for the solar and the car power. Over here, I have a wire going to down here, which is the temperature sensor. It won't charge if the temperature is below 32 degrees because of the lithium batteries. This is connected to the bed as well on a hinge. This is screwed on, these are screwed on. And this is held on with a little elastic, elastic on screws. So yeah, not sure why panel isn't working. You know, everything, everything has to have its problems. Figured out my problem. So the battery temperature sensor in my hand right now, it keeps the charger from charging the battery if it's lower than 32 degrees, like I said a second ago. And this has been sitting out in the cold, but I just brought the battery out here from inside uh, because I didn't want to leave it out in the cold all night. And I know that the battery is like warm enough. So I just, I'm warming up the temperature sensor. And so now with both of the switches on, you can see that the farthest to left light is the alternator light. That means that it's charging. And that the, the second one on from the left is the solar light, which means that the solar panel is charging and everything is full go. Good to know that the temperature sensor actually works. I guess I wanted to explain this real quick too. Just the wiring. On the right here are all of the negatives for the battery, for the car battery, and for the solar panel. Down here is the positive out. That's going to the battery right here, what they call the service battery or your house battery. Then over here is the PV positive, which means the solar panel positive. That's going to the solar panel positive through the switch here. And then I have alternator positive. That's going to the battery positive through the switch as well. And that's it for the cables. Short explanation, I have those two wires. These are coming from the charge controller. And the positive wire is going right here. It's fused right here with a 50 amp fuse. And then going all the way over and connected to the battery positive terminal. Then this black wire is the negative and it's going over here and connected to this ground right here that I use for my inverter tube but it's just a it's a good ground that has the right size bolt to bolt this on. As you can see the solar wires come down and yeah hope that helps and good luck if you don't know yourself. That's about it though. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps.